I am sitting in a chair today. And while you can see that I'm sitting in a chair, the history and the connection that this chair has may not be evident, and indeed I would expect that it probably isn't. The chair that I am sitting in is a chair that came from my father's sister's house, my aunt's house, from central Pennsylvania, which is where she and my father ended up growing up together. Now, whether this was my aunt's chair or whether it was my grandmother's chair, I'm not entirely sure, but this chair came from central Pennsylvania. And I think that it's appropriate to make use of the chair in talking about um, the topic that I have on my heart. And one of the things that I want to point out is often there's a story that's told, and that's good. Sometimes there's something scriptural or something philosophical that's a point that I talk about, and that works too. But what I'm thinking about today is I'm thinking about Proverbs in the Hebrew Scriptures. And Proverbs is a collection of sayings that go back roughly 3,000 years. And the point of Proverbs, as it's attributed to Solomon, is that Proverbs is about how to live wisely and how to live prudently. Now, generationally over the years, throughout most of history, what would happen is parents would teach their children how to live and then their children would live roughly like how the parents lived. And so if you had parents who were scoundrels, their children would tend to be scoundrels. And if you had parents who ended up being God-fearing people, they would typically train their children to be God-fearing people as well. One of the interesting things that happened in the 1960s when I was a child was there ended up being a movement whereby using the media, using newspapers, using television, in the midst of the firmament of the Vietnam War, in the midst of an era and a time where the President of the United States was assassinated, where uh, the, a primary civil rights leader who was also a pastor was assassinated, and then when the uh, president who was assassinated, his brother was running for election to become president, he too was assassinated. So there was a very great amount of turmoil, and there were all sorts of things that were going on around that time frame. And in the midst of all of the things going on, it turned out that there was absolutely a division between parents and their children. And the baby boomers who were coming of age, who were in their teens and their early 20s, ended up rejecting the materialism, the work ethic, and much of what their parents had embraced. And instead, what you ended up having very quickly was you ended up having a situation whereby all of a sudden, children didn't value their parents' worldview, and parents were confused about who their kids were. And so in the midst of this, it was something that we kind of muddled through. There were articles about it in the media. There were news stories. There were movies where people were going to the movies trying to figure out what had happened. But there was this discontinuity between the values of the parents and the values of the children. Now, we really didn't know what was going to end up happening. But what ultimately ended up happening was there was a rejection of the life that the parents had lived through the Eisenhower administration and before. There was a sense that everything was experimental. And all of a sudden, the pharmaceutical industry had a birth control pill, which separated having children from having intimate relations. In addition to this, there was 
a belief that the parents' generation had been kind of stodgy and kind of really not warm, welcoming, and open. Now, I honestly think that the reason that the parents weren't warm, welcoming, and open was because a fair amount of the fathers of that generation had PTSD from the Korean War and before the Korean War was World War II. And so you had a lot of kids who had been raised in a situation where dad had gone and seen amazing horror in terms of war. And the dads didn't talk about the horror of war, and the kids didn't know about their parents' horror. And so when you have an older generation that's not communicating because of trauma, when you have a younger generation just, that just thinks that the parents are a problem, you end up having a lack of passing of wisdom from one generation to the next. So in order to deal with this, Solomon ends up collecting proverbs, some of which I'm pretty sure he wrote, and some of which I'm pretty sure he picked up and repurposed from the culture in general. But Proverbs talks about what it is and what the purpose of it is. And so I really want to read to you quickly just a bit of the prologue so you can understand this. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight, for acquiring a disciplined and a prudent life, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young, let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance, for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise, the fear of Adonai is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So what do you do if you have a generation where the wisdom that came before all of a sudden is not getting passed down to the next generation? You can't rely on what other people are talking about, you have to go and find a way to get wisdom, to get insight, to get understanding. And so I'll probably have another video or two where I'll talk about wisdom and insight and understanding, but I'm glad to do it from a chair that belonged to my aunt, that quite likely belonged to my grandmother, that I don't know whether or not my grandfather, who died at a relatively young age, sat in it and used it. But for me, this is a prop. And this prop re represents generations. And the hope is that as we take a look at wisdom, those who have been wise in other generations will be those who will be able to trust and who will, we will be able to move forward in extending the goodness and the graciousness of what God has designed. Shalom.